So I'm going to try to answer the question, can I use my tiny SA to look at uh, Bluetooth signals? I think a lot of people would like to do that. And so here's a Bluetooth signal. It is a spread spectrum. It uh, starts at 2.4 gigahertz and goes up, I think it goes up 85 megahertz um, bandwidth. And uh, you can see this picture here is a max hold. So the Bluetooth signals come and go, right? They're sent out in little bursts and it does frequency hopping. It sends it at different frequencies depending on uh, how it feels. And so uh, you, ha you do have the problem with the tiny SA sweeping sort of slowly. So you have to be lucky to catch a peak. So this has been running a couple minutes. So don't expect to see it right away. Um, the red traces there are the um, real lifetime ones. And the yellow traces are the stored uh, max holds. And so if you leave it on long enough, you'll build up this picture. And so uh, let me let me talk about how you set it up and then we'll 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 see uh, we'll see how how this works. OK, you have to use a mixer. So the tiny SA only operates up to 350 megahertz and you need to measure 2.4 gigahertz. So you're going to have to mix it down. So you need to have a mixer and you have to choose your mixer wisely. You have to choose it so that um, you can take the 2.4 gigahertz and mix it with something else to give you a zero to 350 megahertz. Right now, I'm mixing it with 2.3 gigahertz. So 2.4 gigahertz, 2.3 gigahertz, I'm gonna have 100 megahertz. And 100 megahertz is, with, is within the range of the, uh, of the tiny SA. So you need to do that. You also need to be able to pick up the uh, Bluetooth signal. So how do you do that? Uh, well, previously I've shown uh, these non-contact sensors, these uh, H-field and E-field probes. I have an H-field probe here. And I found that on my iPhone, the uh, Bluetooth antenna seems to be kind of over there. And so I have it just sitting on the bench here listening to the, uh, the Bluetooth transmission. And then you need to have some type of local oscillator. So I'm using my little board here. And I have it set to a DC, um, you know, a CW frequency of 2.3 gigahertz. It just it's solid 2.3 gigahertz. It mixes with the 2.4 and, and it comes out, comes out here somewhere around 100 megahertz. All right. So let's take a look at the uh, display here and I'll show you how to set that up. Okay, so obviously I'm using max hold. So where's max hold? Max hold is in display. So we're gonna go here to display and it's under calc. It's in a strange place, it's under calc. And there's a max hold. If I turn max hold off, then uh, we will see every once in a while, we will get a spike here around 100, 100 megahertz. And that's what we wanna capture, okay? Now we want a nice big uh, signal. So I have manually set the attenuator uh, level attenuator. I've set this to manual and I've set it to zero dBm. So you can look over, you can look right here and it says attenuation zero dB. So that gives us a nice big signal. And I've set the uh, reference level to minus 10 dBm. And then all you have to do, go, go back in uh, to display calc max hold and you wait <laughs> and you wait and you wait. So I'll give you an idea of how long you have to wait. Um, so the uh, Bluetooth signal, like I said, uh, is only transmitted intermittently and it, it fills the buffer of the receive unit. Then it waits a while and it sends it again. So, so here you go. We're starting to build up the picture. So if you want to know what frequency you have here, you have to do a little bit of math. Uh, we have our local oscillator set to 2.3, so we need to add 2.3 uh, gigahertz to this. That's 2300 megahertz. So 2300 times uh, plus 1.02 is 2402.254. So you just add uh, 2300 to any number you see here, and uh, that's your that's your Bluetooth signal. All right, this particular. Um, mixer I got on the used market. So I, I don't know if you can still buy it or not. Um, I'll give you the part number here in a second, but I have a markings on it here. So I don't, I don't forget. So the RF connection, which is this one, the R connection, um, 
uh, can operate between two and a half and five gigahertz. And we're operating at 2.4. So we're stretching it a little bit, but it's, it's a specified at 2.5 to five gigahertz. Now the IF frequency, which is the output here into the, uh, into the tiny SA is specified from zero to two gigahertz. All right. And the LO frequency, I believe, is also two and a half to five gigahertz, right? So we're using, we're using it stretched a little bit. Uh, we have 2.3 going in and 2.4 going in. That's close to the 2.5 and it seems to operate just fine. And then you have to choose which port you're going to take it out on because that's a very low frequency. That's 100, that's 100 megahertz. So you have to make sure your mixer can handle 100 megahertz. And this one is specified from zero to two gigahertz on the uh, IF output. So... Um, the part number of this one is an MX5500, and it's made by AirTech, A-E-R-T-E-C-H. And I picked it up off of eBay used. Um, don't know if there's any more for sale, but it's a nice one. Uh, the uh, the uh, H&E field probes are, are these things here. They're a PC board with a, with a loop, and they come in different sizes. Uh, there's... Uh, teeny tiny ones, and there's a medium sized round one and a big one, and they come as a kit for about 12 bucks. I'll put a link down below if you want to buy these things. Uh, they're kind of nice to have. Uh, otherwise, just stick a piece of wire around your phone and hook that up. Probably works fine too.